Hello there and welcome back to my photography channel. It's been a while since I did my last video and uh, that was about the 10 favorite film cameras. Uh, I promised to do this video for quite some time now after I made the two other 58mm lens reviews uh, a couple of months back. And uh, so this has been, been a while in the making and I thought it would be a good time to finally get this sort of review done. So this is a very, very special lens. Uh, and I think it's one of my mo most used lenses actually overall. Uh, also in comparison to the other two 58 millimeter lenses. Uh, I haven't used it that much lately, but uh, when I got it, it was uh, one of the uh, lenses that I used regularly for my weddings and uh, other portrait work and also some other documentary work that I did. And uh, lately I've been using the uh, Voigtlander 58 Nocturne a lot, as I told you in my last video about that lens. Uh, but now I'm going to talk about this magnificent lens and why it's one of my favorite lenses ever, to be honest. So the Nikon 58mm f1.4 G lens uh, is a very controversial lens, actually. It's a very divided topic when you talk about this lens. And uh, if you read on forums or look it up on the internet, you can see that either people seem to love it or they seem to hate it. And uh, one of those reasons is that it doesn't do very well on spec charts and so on if you compare it to many other Nikon lenses, especially the newer ones. Uh, it isn't as sharp or it doesn't have uh, as good specs as the other lenses. But, but there is another reason that uh, make people love it. And I, I've seen an equal amount of people pour love over this lens for, the, for that particular reason. And I'm going to go into those reasons uh, in a bit and tell you why this is also my favorite lens overall when it comes to uh, portrait photography and wedding photography and sort of environmental portrait photography. So if we go into some of the specifications of this lens, it is, uh, as I said, a 1.4 aperture lens. It's got a silent wave motor, which makes it focus very silently. Uh, it's a pretty light lens. It's, it's weighs uh, 385 grams. So pretty light. It's uh, quite well built, although it's mostly plastic. Uh, the AF is not very fast, but it's it's fairly quick. It's got nine elements in six groups. It's got two aspherical elements, and it's got nano crystal coating, which makes it behave pretty good in certain lighting situations and so on. It doesn't flare as much and so. Uh, it's got a minimal focus distance of 0.58 meters, which is, yeah, we, it's okay, I guess. It's sort of the modern Noct, and uh, I don't know if you have seen my other review of the Nikkor Noct 58mm f1.2 lens. But uh, that lens was designed for astrophotography, and uh, they wanted to make a newer version of that lens. So they decided to make this lens. And uh, I believe it's the same designer actually that designed the Nikon 105mm lens uh, f1.4 and also the 24mm 1.4 G lens. I might be mistaken, but I seem to have read that somewhere. And also uh, there's no mistake or... or uh, uh, coincidence that those two other lenses are also two of my favorites because of the, the character that I think is, is pretty similar to this lens actually. Uh, so I don't think it's, a, I think that's right, but you have to look it up if I'm right there. So with some of those specs out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the, the good and the bad with this lens and why there are so many people loving it or hating it. And if we go into some of the bad stuff that I heard other people say, uh, well, first of all, there is the price point. This lens is uh, a lot uh, more expensive than, than some of the other alternatives. 
around its focal length. And uh, for example, the uh, 50 millimeter lens, Nikon uh, 1.4G, is a lot cheaper. And some other uh, older lenses as well that you can get fairly cheap, especially in comparison to this 58 millimeter lens. I mean, it's the only 58 millimeter lens, Nikon lens out there. So uh, in that regard, there are no comparisons, but if you're around, if you're searching for lens in around the same focal length, I can understand why people sort of scoff at the price and, and uh, ask themselves, why should I get this lens? And also, I mean, uh, you get this a, lo this a lot in, in forums and so on, that you have this division between people like in the specs and, uh, and uh, how well the lens performs for them in certain situations and so on. And then you have the other people that sort of value the character and uh, the, the magic, quote unquote, <laughs> that hear a lot of people scoff at when they hear. I know it's a hated, hated expression uh, for many photographers and people uh, using lenses, but uh, there is a thing that you can you can uh, that that is really valued among many photographers, and this lens has that in uh, in heaps. But if you don't like that sort of thing and doesn't really believe in that sort of uh, specifications of a lens and you don't want to pay that amount of money for it. I can understand that. So that's, uh, I think, one of the major reasons, the price point. Uh, also, the good thing about this lens for the people that love the lens is the bouquet and uh, the character, as I said. And a lot of the other crowd then think that the bouquet is weird and that doesn't fit their purpose. And yeah, they don't, just don't like the uh, the bokeh of this lens and also as i told you earlier it doesn't do too well on the test charts and so on which means it isn't sharp and it's quite hard nailing focus especially around uh, f1.4 and a lot of people had problem with back uh, back focusing and so on and that you have to calibrate the lens to get it to focus uh, properly so that can be a nuisance, of course, when you buy the lens for that amount of money and it doesn't perform or, or even focus properly or get you um, blurry photos. So that's not a good thing. I understand that quite well. <laughs> um, but if you uh, calibrate that or it's uh, if you're lucky right away and get a uh, lens sample that you don't have to calibrate right away, you're getting a lens that has all that others, other uh, those other benefits I'm going to talk about. And if you like that, it's it's a very, very special lens. But if you don't uh, and belong to the other crowd that value those other things with a lens, uh, yeah, that's a low point, very low point, and something uh, that you can't live with uh, at that price point. Then if we go into some of the more general pros of uh, this lens that I hear people talk about and that I also read on other reviews. Well, to begin with, I think the overall reason or pro would be the character, which is also something I value a lot with this lens. And I think the second thing, except the character or sort of special look of this lens would be the bokeh. Uh, it has some of the nicest bokeh that I have seen from any, any lens that I've used. And uh, the Nikkor Noct has a similar bokeh. It's not exactly similar, but it's very, very close. And uh, I can imagine they were quite happy when they designed this lens and uh, saw, saw how it performed, and it was quite similar. Uh, it doesn't have as much of that swirly bokeh that some people love with the Nikkor Noct and sort of define the Nikkor Noct pictures when you look at them. But it has something similar and it can get a little bit swirly, so a little bit similar, but very, very nice bokeh. It just sort of melts away the background completely if you want to at 1.4. If you nail focus with it and uh, you, you get the focus where you want and then use it on f uh, 1.4, the background would just melt away and 
would look like uh, cotton or butter or whatever sort of expression you want to <laughs> attach to it or uh, ability you want to attach to it. But yeah, very, very nice and special. Uh, the focal length, I think, is uh, pretty special for some people that sort of look for this. And uh, it's not a 50. I mean, a 50 is one of the most common, commonly used focal length anyway. But then you get a little bit of extra. So if you're taking a lot of portraits or you use it for portrait photography, uh, it's a little bit special in that regard as well, since you get a little bit closer to the, to the model the object you want to take photograph of and it also makes uh the bokeh a little bit better or yeah uh since a little bit more tele photo lens makes the bokeh a little bit uh, easier to get um uh, i'd say a lot of people value the compactness and smallness and weight of this lens as well i know i do uh and I believe it's one of the reasons that it's used in so many wedding photography kits. First, because of its character and bokeh, but also since it's so kind of versatile to take environmental portrait shots at wedding receptions and uh, at the ceremony, ceremony and uh, all those other wedding situations. Uh, I think as a prime, it's one of those lenses that it's uh, it's very very versatile and good to have with you in your kit especially in being this small so after going over some of the general pros of the 58 millimeter lens i'm going to show you a part of the reason why i love the 58 millimeter so much or i love to shoot with it so much uh, when i got the nicker 58 f 1.2 lens I paired it with a Nikon DF. And the photos that I cr could create with a, with a uh, combo, the lens and the camera combo, uh, were some of those photos that I loved the most, looking back at them. And uh, it was a combination that produced photos uh, in a way that I can't really produce with any other combo lens or camera up to date. So for me, it was kind of a no-brainer to get the 58G lens, uh, especially after selling the Nikkor uh, Nock lens. Uh, this is the only lens I have uh, that can create similar photos. And especially portrait uh, photography. Uh, for that reason, I would recommend this lens and camera combo over all other cameras or lenses together. It just create uh, it has some sort of special quality the D4 and DF sensor paired with this lens. Can't really describe it, but I will post some pictures uh, in this video at the end, so you can you can take a look and hopefully you can sort of see some of the the magic that I uh, find in those in, in those photos and in this lens together with this camera. Also, together with the DF, it's a very, very nice light combo. And uh, as I said earlier, it's one of the main reasons for me bringing it to weddings and other sort of doc documentary photography work. It's just uh, such a small portable kit to have in your camera bag. And uh, yeah, the DF, I'm going to make a review of that in another video for some, uh, for some future video. But... Uh, <clears throat> Just briefly, uh, sort of speaking about the DF, it's uh, one of those cameras that that uh, sort of is in some between area, some hybrid uh, DSLR for me. It's not as heavy as those other professional cameras, and it's uh, a little bit heavier than the mirrorless cameras that you can get, like the Fuji system and so on. But it's still a manageable weight, and uh, together, especially with this lens or other smaller lenses, it's, it's a pretty nifty combo to, to bring with you. So there aren't much more to say about the lens, I think, uh, and why I prefer this lens so much, or like this lens so much. Um, but as I said, just a dream lens, together with the 105mm f1.4 and the 24mm. Nikon lens 1.4 as well. Uh, those uh, 
three lenses I consider some sort of a dream team for me when it comes to lenses. Very, very nice. And uh, I just love the character in those lenses. I've gone through uh, from shooting a lot of digital uh, photography to shooting a lot of film photography, as you uh, know if you watch this channel a little bit. But um, when I want to shoot digital, I either grab my Leica M240 with some of those lenses or I get the Nikon DF and uh, maybe the 58 or the 105. And uh, the photos I can take with that, uh, those lenses together with the DF are some of those photos that makes me still uh, like digital photography to be honest. I don't like uh, the, the, the photos as much when I take them with a Nikon D810 or other lenses. And uh, yeah, it has something special for sure, this lens. And I think over those other two lenses, this is uh, probably my favorite because of its uh, versatility. The 24 lens is, is very handy to have with you as well. And like for documentary work, work um, only documentary work i prefer the 24 focal length uh, before any len length really focal length but if i'm gonna bring one lens to a wedding for example i know i can shoot some documentary work as well as some lovely portrait work with this uh, combo so yeah i think the 58 millimeter lens is uh, probably my sort of Desert Island lens when it comes to digital photography. So without further ado, let's look at some of the pictures that I've taken with this uh, lens and camera combo. I believe some of the pictures might be taken with a 58mm lens and the D4 as well. But it has the same sensor, so it's uh, not going to be that much of a difference. Uh, enjoy! Thank you!
Thank you for watching that slideshow and thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching it. Um, just a few words briefly about the content, the future content of this channel. I'm gonna try to not limit myself to either film photography or digital photography. I'm gonna try to speak about, to talk about the gear that I've used over the years that I've, that I've been passionate about. And that uh, includes both digital cameras and film cameras and lenses for those cameras. Um, well, or anything really photography related that I like and I've been passionate about. So I'm not really sure what the next video will be about, but I have tons of ideas for coming uh, videos that I'm going to put out. There is just a little question about getting time for that. I got a full time work and a family as well. So uh, yeah, when I get some spare time, I'm definitely going to sit down and, and I'm trying to produce some more content. So thank you for watching and uh, have a good day. Thank you.